Hello, I'm John Bell, the co-artistic director of the Bell Shakespeare Company, and I'm very thrilled to have as my guest, Lily Cole. Lily, you're about to start a very exciting project. What is it? Um, I am about to play Helen of Troy in an adaptation of the Iliad, and will be performing at the Royal Exchange in Manchester and then at the Globe in London. So there's a nice Shakespearean connection there in the land. <laughs> at the Globe, that's, that's very exciting. You've yeah. seen the space, you've seen a show there. Yeah. It's, it's a very exciting place to be. I've been on stage there, and not in a show, just looking around. Yeah. But when you walk out through the curtain onto that space and see all these faces all around you, you know, on, in the ground, on the groundlings and all the galleries, it's a really exciting, thrilling space. Yeah. So I think you enjoy doing that. Tell us, um, what, what Shakespeare plays have you most liked in performance? or performances you've most admired? Um, I think the strongest performance I've seen live has been uh, I've seen Kevin Spacey play Richard III. Mm -hmm. um, I saw that um, at the Old Vic in England, I think about a year ago, and um, he just really, like him and all the other cast too, really made it come to life in a way that I could hear every word of the script, of the, of the, of the text. And it's not, that's not often always the case, I think. When you see it live, I've often, I often tune out for, mm -hmm. for periods of the text, which is such a shame because the text is so powerfully done and beautiful. Um, so when I see a performance that actually speaks to me, that I can capture all of it, it's, um, I mean, it's a very effective thing. Uh, and I saw a footage also of um, Judi Dench playing Titania um, when she was younger that has always stayed with me too, where again, I could hear every single word, like I could hear the text so clearly because she was so truthful, I think, in her delivery of it. Yeah, well, she's a wonderful actress of anything. But her Shakespeare, she started with the Royal Shakespeare Company yeah. and done a lot of that work. I think, you know, if you see a great performance like that, it inspires you to go back and read the play. Yeah. That's what happened to me when I, you know... Yeah. Often kids at school, they look at the script and think, you know, can't make head or tail of it. If you see it well done, and it has to be well done, mm -hmm. uh, that inspires you to go back and look at it and read it and mm -hmm. understand it more thoroughly. Yeah, I initially fell for Shakespeare through reading it as opposed to seeing it. Right. So I'd seen you know, the typical kind of remit of school versions of it when I was growing mm. up. And it always, I'd never been impressed or thought I was disimpressed, but just I'd always tuned out, like it always kind of washed over me. And then I remember, I think it was a fellow as the first that we properly studied and actually like looking at the language and looking at his use of words. And it's so like, I just had came to have such respect, like such profound respect for the way that he used language in, a, in such a beautiful and different way. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, my respect came mostly from reading. And then when you do find a performance that kind of does justice to that language, it's, yeah, it's a very powerful combination. Yeah. Would you like to do more Shakespeare roles? Um, I haven't really done any Shakespeare <laughs> roles. Uh, I would love to, yeah, mm. because, I mean, one of the beautiful things about acting is that it gives you a period of time where you really focus on uh, a character and obviously the story and obviously the language and so I think having that luxury of getting to spend several months really engaging with a text with one of his texts um, and digging deeper would be a you know brilliant experience yeah I think that's right that when you read it on the page is one thing when you get up and start to express it and yeah. breathe it and say it to somebody and then that and can you to, to move it. and to let the emotions rise that's when it really really pays off so what what parts if I said to you tomorrow what part do you want to play what would you like to do Hamlet Hamlet fantastic <laughs> fantastic there have been a the number male of, one. yeah yeah there been a very a number of very famous female Hamlets I mean Women are acting more and more now, the male Shakespeare roles, like Helen yeah. Mirren just did Prospero quite recently, yeah. and uh, oh, there have been you know, quite, quite a few, which is, I think, a nice reversal, because in Shakespeare's day, the men played all the women's parts, yeah, and now the women are true. getting their revenge. <laughs> yeah. It's true. So, uh, wh why Hamlet? What appeals to you so much about that character? Why do you want to play it? Um, I, I, I can't think of the exact quotes, but there are quotes I've read from Hamlet that just like stir me they have so mm -hmm. much truth in them and um, there's one about good and bad and this idea that there is no such thing as good and bad if oh. the only thing is thinking it or naming it yeah and uh, there's nothing either good or bad but thinking makes it makes so. it so yeah. that's very true isn't it we, I we, think that's so true yeah I think it's so true and also the battle the battle of like an internal battle like this idea that humans whether male or female have this internal battle um, I just, there are so many kind of poignant ideas in it that, um, again, I would love to 
to love to explore further. Yeah. And you, what's the favourite? What's your favourite things that you've played uh, and worked the on? The part I've most enjoyed playing was Falstaff. Okay. You wouldn't, you wouldn't think it's a look at me, but you know, padded up and yeah, and, yeah. Uh, because it's it sort of released something in me that um, is pretty anarchic and okay. you can have a lot of fun. He's a total kind of irresponsible character. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's good to be irresponsible sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. and allowed to get away with it. You know, yeah. they, they get put in jail for it. So I enjoyed that very much. And Richard III, I liked too. Okay. Uh, yeah, to play someone so charming and yet so utterly depraved. Yeah. Who can seduce people by the power of his imagination. That, that's yeah. what actors do. Yeah. yeah. I think Titania would be fun too. Well, you saw Judy Dench play Titania. Yeah. And yeah. one would have thought she was too old for the part because, you know, but it didn't matter with her. No, it doesn't matter. I mean, I think the version I saw, she was younger, but I right. think she played it again, actually, more she recently. She played it, I think, at yeah. the Globe quite recently. Yeah. Which yeah. seemed very risky, but... Uh, he, no. Not at all. Great. Not at yeah. all, yeah. yeah. And why, well, why, I think this... I mean, the thing that is so, I think, powerful about Shakespeare is he speaks such human truths across the board, whether it yeah. is being the ridiculous characters or it's issues of love or it's kind of you know, issues of depravity and moral kind of, kind of moral justice. And um, that speaks, I think, to most people, regardless of age or gender, you mm. know, like what those characters represent and tap into, um, I think transcend the boxes of, of age or gender. And that's why it would make sense that somebody could play a character other than their type. That, that's right, because if you look at Shakespeare's own theatre, as we said, the men play the women's parts, so gender wasn't ever an issue. What was, in, what was important was the, I suppose, the, the power of the character. Mm -hmm. So some of the most powerful figures are the female characters, you mm -hmm. know. I'm thinking of someone like Volumnia in Coriolanus, she's a very powerful woman. Cleopatra is, has this mm -hmm. almost masculine sort of power, if you mm -hmm. like. So gender wasn't the issue, it was um, the qualities that... And often when women dressed up as men, they assumed a power, like Portia when she becomes puts into male costumes you can play the judge so it was all a matter of role playing mm -hmm. and I guess that's you know brings us back to the to the actors again and when did you fall in love with Shakespeare when I was at school did you fall in love with Shakespeare at school or later at university um, I first first started to really respect it in school yeah uh, like 15 probably around did that you have age. a really good teacher or did you have to do it on your own I was largely on my own I yeah. think the text speaks for itself like mm -hmm. once you I remember for the first time looking at the page, and, it, and you obviously always hear about Shakespeare, and Shakespeare's great, and Shakespeare's great, and as a kid, I'd never really got it, like right. on an experiential level. Right. And then when I actually sat down with the text and had to like pick it apart, and I'd be like, whoa, like he is actually like so brilliant and clever and using language in such an interesting way. Um, and so that was the first time it spoke to me um, somewhat. And then I think when I really fell in love with it was I, only actually a few years ago, um, and it was more, and it wasn't even from a specific experience, it was more me thinking about art and thinking about mm. why, um, why I love art in general, whether it's uh, aesthetic or language, um, and the artists that I respect most historically. And the real crux of it for me is in, is in the ability to kind of speak a truth that, um, that isn't being iterated necessarily by the zeitgeist, um, that, uh, that then causes a paradigm chip shift because there is truth in it and I think that some of the best artists have done that and they've had an effect um, because they do something so uh, profound and so uh, yeah I think that the fact that Shakespeare is 450 years later still relevant and still poignant is because he spoke of truths that are timeless to the human condition. Absolutely um, in fact I don't really believe in in time as a concept. You know? Interesting. Like T.S. Eliot said time present is time past and you know, time future yeah, they're all yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's just one condition and the fact that there are slight historical and linguistic things to accommodate that shouldn't stop us from appreciating it yeah you look at an ancient painting and it could be painted yesterday because it's you know it's still beautiful yeah and the truth that it taps to is still relevant regardless of the time frame absolutely yeah, yeah. so it's just um, a matter of I think not being lazy, but as you said, applying yourself to studying it and looking at it and absorbing that, that beauty from, from reading. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, thank you for joining us today. Oh, it's been pleasure. marvelous to talk to you. And yeah. great luck with uh, the Iliad on the Globe thank stage. It'll be very exciting. Thank you. And um, for us, just want to say um, it's wonderful to have Lily with us to celebrate Shakespeare's birthday and uh, with Bill Shakespeare to have a whole week of celebrations of the world's greatest playwright. So from Bill Shakespeare, from Lily, from Google, over and out. Thank you. <laughs>